Hey guys, this is Jim K again from StairwayToVideo.com with another one of my video tips. You know, did you ever buy a microphone and then uh, bring it into your video editing software and then realize, gosh, this sound really stinks? Well, it's happened to me and I've got several microphones. Uh, but there is a little way to cheat your microphone sound, your audio, on your video if you do this little tip that I'm going to show you. Anyway, I've got six microphones laid out in front of me here and I'm going to use this little trick to help you guys get better audio for your video. Come on, let's get started. Okay, the group of microphones we're going to be using today are going to be both dynamic or condenser microphones. And they're going to have an XLR connection on the bottom. It's a three-pin connection. You can plug them into either a mixing console or a soundboard or in this case, we're going to plug them into the digital SLR camera that I'm using, my Canon 60D. So when you think of a microphone like this, you think of usually an expensive microphone. And they're not always expensive. For instance, this Audio-Technica AT2100, this thing was around uh, $75. But we're also going to be testing a more expensive one. This is an Audio-Technica BP40. It's a large diaphragm microphone. This is about $349, $350. So it does not have to be expensive to get good sound out of it using this little cheat method I'm going to show you. Okay, we've got six microphones here um, ranging in price and, and size and style. We've got four dynamic microphones and two condenser microphones. Let me show you these microphones so you'll see exactly what ones we're going to use for this little test or trick or cheat that we're going to use on these microphones. The first one is the Audio-Technica AT2100 dynamic microphone. The next one is the uh, Blue Spark microphone. It's a condenser microphone. The next one is an Electro Voice RE50N slash DB. That's also a dynamic microphone. Then we have the Sennheiser ME66 condenser shotgun microphone. We've got the Audio-Technica AT8004L. That's also a dynamic microphone. And then the Audio-Technica BP40 dynamic microphone. Okay, I've got the uh, Audio-Technica AT2100 here, and I'm just talking into it like you normally would hook this up to your camera if you didn't do this little cheat method I'm going to show you in a minute. So what you have to do is you have to turn the preamps up in the Canon camera to get the correct output, which is basically minus 12 dB. So let's do a test and see how this sounds. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Sound check, one, two, testing, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two. Now let's give it uh, five seconds of silence. Again, this is what this dynamic microphone made by Audio-Technica, the AT2100, would sound like just plugged in directly into your camera with no, uh, with no hack that, uh, and no cheating method that I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay, this time the cheat, or the hack, has been performed on the camera and the microphone. How does this sound? Now if I want to get nice and close, I was able to turn the preamps down in the camera and then use a secondary device to get good clean sound through another external preamp. So let's, um, let's just do a quick sound check here and then we'll go over and go over the parameters and how to set this cheat or hack up so you can get good sound too. Uh, testing, one, two, three, sound check, one, two, sound check, one, two, three. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Uh, let's give it five seconds of silence. There may be a little bit of sound because I've got my washing machine and my dryer running uh, down the hallway here. So if there is sound, when we're in the five seconds of silence there, it could be partially that. Otherwise, it should be fairly clean. So, let's get into this hack. So, in order to get good audio, what we're going to do is we're going to actually connect the camera and the microphone together using this guy. It's called an iRig Pre. It's a very, very inexpensive pre-amplifier that has good, clean sound. A lot cleaner than your digital SLR camera is going to have. So, here's what we're going to do. The first plug the XLR cable into the back of the microphone again. Okay, so that's 
that's plugged in now. I'm going to take the other end of this microphone. We're going to plug it into the iRig Pre, so the base of the iRig Pre. Okay, like that. Then the other end has what's called a TRRS adapter, which is good for going into like your iPhone, but not for going into your camera. So you need to get this adapter, which adapts a TRRS, this guy, to a TRS stereo connection. And now we can just plug it into the top of this camera like that. So the only difference is now we need to turn this on. It takes a nine volt battery, you turn it on. With a dynamic mic, you don't need to have these 48 volts. And we'll work on that later when we get a condenser mic. So I'm going to talk into this. Now, if you look at it, look at the meters. I'm talking into this Audio-Technica. As I talk into it, the meters are really peaking now. They're, they're way too loud. It would make a distorted noise because now we've got the preamp working. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down into the record level. This guy right here. We're gonna, and we're going to take this down. Oops. And take this down to the lowest point it is, and that will be off. So right there, if you notice, the meters aren't the meters aren't moving at all. That means it's off. So we're going to go one click above that to right there. Now, if you look at this, we're, we're, when I'm talking into the microphone real close, let me get real closer so you can see it, talking in the microphone close, um, we're sort of around minus 12, 12 dB, but you want to make sure you're not going to peak when you yell. So you do a little, hello, 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 sound check, sound check, one, two. So what I do is I make, I, I go on the side of uh, a little bit louder. So I'm going to turn this guy on my preamplifier up. So there's a dial on the side of this iRig. So I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Sound check. One, two. Sound check. Testing. One, two, three. Sound check. One, two, three. Now that's going to work for me. When I'm talking, it's staying right around 12 dB. And uh, it's not peaking when I talk really loudly. So that's the big secret to getting good sound when uh, you're using the preamplifier in this iRig Pre instead of the one in your camera. Okay, the second microphone we're gonna test is this Blue Spark condenser microphone. It comes with this isolated mount so you don't get any vibrations up into the microphone. It is an XLR microphone and because it's a condenser microphone, we're going to have to uh, add phantom power to it. And that's about 48 volts that's going to come from my iRig Pre that I showed you earlier. So let's get into this and do a little bit of a sound test. Okay, I have now switched over to the Blue Spark condenser microphone. Usually with a microphone like this, you've got to get in kind of close, and that's why they put this pop filter on it, so that uh, it kind of gets rid of some of your plosives, which are like P's and B's. So I'm talking a little bit of off-axis, not right in the microphone. If I was going to talk right in the microphone, I'd probably want to, want to put on a bigger or a better pop filter onto this thing so it would sound better. Um, again, XLR microphone. I'm plugged into the Canon 60D. I have my uh, iRig Pre preamplifier and I'm doing this little cheat method to get uh, better audio out of this thing. I think this microphone is fantastic for the price but boy oh boy what a great what a great close talking microphone for what you want to do on either YouTube or on your um, podcast or whatever. Again it's got the body is about uh, I don't know four inches tall. It's got a little bit of a roll-off switch on the bottom. Let's give it a test here. I'll click it on. Testing one, two, testing one, two, check, sound check, one, two, three. I don't know if that makes any difference. You tell me. I'm going to take it off again now. Let's get into this thing and see what it sounds like when I talk. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Sound check, one, two, mic check, one, two, three. Now let's give it five seconds of silence. Again, this is the Blue Spark condenser microphone.
Okay, next up is this Electro Voice RE50 N slash D hyphen B. It's a broadcast microphone. You'll see them all the time in broadcast news. Um, it's pretty much bulletproof. Uh, the ND in the name means neodymium. It's a special type of a more powerful magnet that helps it get a little bit of a gain boost without having to give it too much gain. Although on my uh, iRig Pre, I did have to give it a little bit of gain in order to get it up to where I wanted it to be for this. Um, it's an omnidirectional polar pattern. Obviously, it's a handheld mic. Uh, it's supposed to have some pretty good shock absorbing capability in here. Let's recite some words here. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Mic check. One, two. Mic check. One, two. So let's give it five seconds of silence. And that's the Electro Voice RE50 N slash D hyphen B uh, broadcast style microphone. I think it sounds pretty good. What do you think? And again, this was done using my cheat method by using the iRig Pre preamplifier. Next up is the Sennheiser ME66 with the K6 power module. In fact, I'm talking into it right now. I've got it about five inches above my, my head and maybe a foot away from my mouth. It is a shotgun condenser microphone, therefore it has to have phantom power. And you can either get the phantom power out of the switch on the end of the microphone, so there's an on-off switch, and when you turn it on, that gives you 48-volt uh, phantom power from the included AA battery. Or you can uh, use the phantom power from the iRig Pre, just flipping the switch to 48-volt phantom power, that gives you the phantom power also. Anyway, I like it because it's a close proximity microphone. Uh, it's easy to set up. You just It's out of the way. I don't have any kind of a lav mic stuck on me. I don't have to worry about getting a, a hand mic close and farther away from me. Um, and it just it, it's just an easy rig without being encumbered by, by wires or whatnot. So anyway, let's do a little bit of a test for it. Um, Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Sound check. One, two. Mic check. One, two, three. Sound check. One, two. And now let's give it five seconds of silence. Because it's a shotgun microphone, it's going to pick up a little bit more of your room noise because of the fact of the way that uh, the thing is angled. So what I do is I have it aiming down toward my chest instead of my mouth, so it's kind of hitting the clothing and not giving you any kind of reverberations or anything like that. But as far as great sound, for not a lot of work, I really like the ME66. Um, it's probably one of the most pricey microphones that I have. So it's got, <clears throat> again, it's got the body, which is basically the ME66. And then you attach this K6 power module, which you can put a AA battery into. Uh, and those two together are going to be right around, I think, if I remember rightly, right around $450 for these two. So it's a kind of an expensive microphone, but good quality sound for what it is. Okay, next up is the Audio-Technica AT-8004L. It's a dynamic microphone, dynamic handheld microphone. And as you can see, I'm holding it about, I don't know, three, four inches away from my mouth. Let's see how it sounds if I take it a little bit farther away. Testing, testing, testing one, two, testing one, two, three. Sound check, one, two, three. Has a tiny bit of handling noise, but it's actually a, it's got pretty good isolation inside the uh, hand grip of this thing. This also is a very reasonably priced microphone. I can't remember the exact price, but for all these microphones, I'll have uh, details down in the show notes below as to where you can get them and how much they are. Um, I've had this microphone for a little while, and uh, I really like it. It's not as expensive as the um, Electro Voice RE50 microphone, but it certainly sounds pretty darn good for doing interviews like this. Again, I've used this little bit of a cheating hack on this one, too, to get better sound out of it. So um, let's put it through its paces. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Sound check. One, two. Mic check. One, two, three. Mic check. One, two. And now let's give it five seconds of silence. 
Um, my heating system just kicked on before I started this little clip here, and um, I'm hoping that it doesn't even make a sound in here because dynamic mics uh, actually do a good job of isolating sound around them. Um, I, I've got this also, like I said, I've got this plugged into the iRig Pre and set up the same way I showed you before. So anyway, the Audio-Technica 8004L long-handled dynamic interview microphone. Okay, for this test, I had to change my shirt so you could see this Audio-Technica BP40 large diaphragm broadcast microphone. It's also dynamic, so it should be rejecting some of the sound that's coming out of my heating system right here. I've got it on a stand so you can see it in the frame of the uh, video here. This has what's called a large humbucking coil inside of it. I don't know exactly what it does, but it's supposed to give you great sound. So let's do a little test here. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Sound test, one, two, sound check, one, two. Mic check, one, two, three, sound check, one, two. And now let's give it uh, five seconds of silence. Again, because it's a dynamic mic, it should do a, a good job of rejecting any noise in the background or surrounding me, and that's why they're used in a studio broadcast situation. It does have a roll-off switch on the back of it, so let's see if uh, how that works. Well, the roll-off switch was already on, so that whole beginning was with the roll-off switch on. Let's see how this sounds now. Mary had a little lamb whose fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. Sound check, one, two. Mic check, one, two, three. And now let's give it five seconds of silence again. So like I said earlier, this is kind of an expensive microphone. It's about uh, $349 as of this video. So I think this will be a great, a great microphone for you if you're doing podcasting or even if you're doing a little bit of e eBay talking head type of a thing. Uh, it's supposed to have a pop filter inside of it built in, but if I was going to do anything serious with this thing, I probably, again, would buy one of these. It's an external um, larger pop filter that's supposed to keep any plosives, you know, like P's and B's from uh, entering into the microphone. So this pretty much concludes our testing of all these different microphones I wanted to show you with my cheating hack method to get better audio with almost any microphone. So again, if you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. It really helps. And all the information and all the data is down below in my show notes. Again, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.